Hi, today we're going to talk about properties and operations. Let's take a look at the first property, the commutative property. Now the commutative property works for addition, it also works for multiplication. And when you hear the words commutative, that just means that something commutes, something moves. In this case, I want you to look out for the numbers moving. They trade places. So for example, um, 2 plus 6 is exactly the same thing as 6 plus 2. Notice how the numbers just traded places. Here it works for multiplication as well. 3 times 5 is exactly the same thing as 5 times 3. Notice how the numbers just traded places. Now when we look at the next property, the associative property, that's when the parentheses actually move and the numbers are frozen in their position. Let me show you what I mean. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is exactly the same as 1 plus 2 plus 3. Notice how the numbers are in the same order. But look at what moves. On the left hand side they want us to add 1 plus 2 first and on the right hand side they want us to add 2 plus 3 first. We'll get the same sum, but notice that the parentheses have moved places. Okay, let's look at example 2 using the properties of multiplication. I always tell people if you're going to use the properties just think of the easiest way to put those numbers together or to multiply those numbers in this case. So they want us to evaluate 4xy when x is negative 8 and y is 15. So I went ahead and wrote it here. 4 times x and I put the negative 8 in for x times y and I put 15 in for y. Now rather than just going from left to right and multiplying the 4 times negative 8 first, it might be smarter for us to do 4 times 15 first because 4 times 15 is easy. We can do it in our head. That gives us 60 and 60 times negative 8 gives us negative 480. And so that's quick and easy. Take a look at checkpoint. They want us to evaluate these expressions when x equals 7 and y equals 25. So the first thing we do is we rewrite it with the values inside. So 2 times x, I put in 7, plus 25, I put that in for y, plus 46. Now, of course, in order of operations, we have to multiply before we do any of the adding. So 2 times 7 gives us 14. But now it's just 14 plus 25 plus 46. Now, in this case, it's going to be smarter and faster to add 14 plus 46 first, because when you add those up, you get 60. And then 60 plus 25 would give us 85. Take a look at number 2. I'm just going to substitute the values in. So I have 4 times, I put 7 for in for x to the second power times 25. I put that in for y. Now, of course, order of operation tells me I have to do the exponents first. So 7 to the second power is 49. And then I just have 4 times 49 times 25. Well, it's a whole lot easier to multiply 4 times 25 first. And so 4 times 25 gives me 100. And then 100 times 49 gives me 4,900. Okay, let's take a look at example 3, simplifying the expression. Uh, you'll often hear me talk about combining like terms. So when things match, we want to put them together. So take a look at A. We have x plus 5 plus 2. Well, 5 plus 2 in algebra we call these constants. They're plain old numbers. And you can go ahead and put those together. So 5 plus 2 gives me 7. So I have x plus 7. Now the reason we have to stop here and highlight it is because this is x. Like think of an x-ray. This is one x-ray like you get at the dentist when they take a picture of your teeth plus 7. Now 7 does not have an x so they don't match so we can't add them together anymore. It's just 1x plus 7 and that's as far as we can go. Take a look at b. We have 3 times 9 times y. Well we can multiply to simplify, uh, 3 times 9 gives us 27, and 27 times y is as far as we can go, 27y. We can't go any farther because we don't know what y is. Okay, take a look at checkpoint. They want us to simplify these expressions. Look at number 3. 
n plus 6 plus 7. Well, again, when we're adding, we want to look for things that match, and numbers match numbers. So 6 plus 7 gives us 13, and so we just bring down the n. We have n plus 13. Now remember, we can't go any farther because the 13 does not have the letter n after it. That's as far as we can go. Take a look at 4. It's 4 times r times negative 3. Well, in this case, we want to multiply those numbers to simplify. 4 times negative 3 gives us negative 12. And then negative 12 times r is as far as we can go because we don't know the value of r. All right, let's look at the identity properties. Now, whenever I see the word identity, I just think of a person looking in the mirror and seeing themselves their reflection doesn't change. And it, the identity property of addition, um, just think about it for a second. What would you add to a number not to change its value? And so take a look. If I started with negative 6, I could add 0, and I still get negative 6. I haven't changed the value. Or in algebra, if I had a variable a, I could add 0, and I don't change a. I still have a. So that's the identity property of addition. Take a look here. The identity property of multiplication is the same idea. If you start with a value, what would you multiply it by so that you don't change its value? So take a look. at If I start with 4 and I multiply by 1, I end up with 4 again. I haven't changed the value. Or if I start with a, I multiply by 1, I still have a. I haven't changed this value. So take a look at example four, identifying properties. Well here I notice that um, on the left hand side of the equal sign, the parentheses were around the three and the two. Over here on the right hand side, the parentheses have moved. They're around the four and the two. So when the parentheses change, and notice nothing else changed, it's three plus two plus four, 3 plus 2 plus 4. So the only thing that's changed is the parentheses moved. That's when it's the associative property of addition because they used addition. Look at b. 0 plus b gives me b again. Well, that's the identity property when I haven't changed the value and the identity property of addition because they used addition. Look at c. 1 times negative 7 gives me negative 7 again. Well, that's the identity property, but this time they used multiplication. And then look at D. C times D is the same as D times C. So notice how they traded places. When they switch places, that's the commutative property of, and then they were using multiplication. So the commutative property of multiplication. Okay, so let's identify the property. And the fastest way to identify the property is to look for what has changed from one side of the equal sign to the other. So notice on number five, I have two times six times three, and on the left or on the right hand side I have two times six times three. So the numbers have not changed their position. But look at what's changed. On the left hand side I have two times six in parentheses, and on the right hand side I have six times three in parentheses. So the parentheses have moved. And when the parentheses move, that's the associative property of multiplication. Okay, take a look at six. I have q plus negative r equals negative r plus q. So notice how the values, the variables, have traded places. When they trade places, that's the commutative property of addition.